The 50th episode, one year old today, the 1UP XP show turns one. And I thank you for joining us today. And if you've been here before, welcome. Thank you for your support and thank you for tuning in every weekend. And today we have a special episode for you because it is our 50th episode and it is our one year anniversary. So we jump into a new game that is free on the Xbox Live Game Pass. We talk to the Renegade CJCJ, Pro Rocket League player that is in the World Championship Curly currently and then we also give you our five well not really our five biggest things but a list of five things that we hold important here on the one of xp show from the last year so let's jump right into it let's show you the highlights for this week's game turbo golf racing it's it's pretty wild check it out oh yeah dude Oh, what a shot by me, dude. Get in the hole. Oh, my God. I am sick. Shot of the game right there, chat. 16 seconds. All right, just straight up, chat. Oh, it didn't work. Just once thought. Get in there. Get in there. Shots, two holes, two goals. Oh my god. That spin be nasty though, chat. Alright, as long as I don't come in last place, I should be okay. Oh no, I went the wrong way. Oh, don't put it out. Oh my.
<gasps> there we go. It's fine. Second. We won. Twenty three. Level up. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Oh, I got a new tire. Oh, I forgot to hit turbo. There we go. What's it like uh, making your balls small? Uh, they go pretty far. Oh no, I off the tree! Oh no. Not good, chat. Not a good way to start. Oh, I hit a tree again! This looks like my real golf game. There we go. Uh. uh oh, I'm going across the fairway. Whoa. Oh, my ball went flying. Oh, that guy had a different colored ball. Oh no, I went off the mountain. It went backwards. Oh my God, dude. This game right now. Put a nice little spin on it. Don't go out. Oh no! I put too much on it? Too much mustard? Oh no! I tried to do the old kick flip. Got her. Whew. Got her in with five tenths of a second to spare, chat. Yeah, turbo golf racing. Let me tell you, that's a lot of fun. It's racing, but you have to put the ball in the hole first. It's like Rocket League, but with golf. A lot of fun. Check it out. Now, coming up next on the 50th episode, our one-year anniversary episode, we talk with CJ. CJ, a pro Rocket League player for the Renegades based out of Detroit, and he's currently competing in the Rocket League World Championship. We'll have that interview right after the break. And welcome back to the 1UP XP show. As we know, the Rocket League World Championship is currently going on right now in Fort Worth, Texas. And Detroit has an esports organization called the Renegades. That's where they call home. But they have a team based out of Australia for Rocket League. And they are currently competing in the World Championship. We sat down with CJ CJ from the Renegades. And we talk about the national or the world championship for Rocket League and how they're doing so far. We caught up with him while he was down in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, let's talk game three now because you guys now, you were in the Swiss. Uh, if anybody had didn't notice or didn't hear when we were watching the Rocket League World Championship, you're in that Swiss kind of bracket where you win three games, you qualify. Uh, if you lose three games, you're out. You go into game three, one and one. You guys um, need to bounce back, need to get that second uh, second win under your belt. And uh, who do you take on for game three? Yeah, so game three, we took on Team Secret. Obviously, for us, it was like we had this OCE versus Sam Valfrey, so we were super pumped to play them. It was the perfect, I guess, uh, I guess bounce back game coming into off the time we lost. So we just went full confidence against Sam. I think that most people predicted those guys to beat us, but uh, yeah, we had that full confidence to end up taking out. They took game one from you guys, but you guys came back and took four from them. Launched you into your fourth game, and you take on 
Optic Gaming, correct? That is, uh, you guys are 2-1, you take on Optic, the green wall, um, but you guys said, no, 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 not today. But let's talk about Game 4. I really was impressed with Game 4 and what you guys did to hold your own against Optic, but you guys took it to Optic and it came out victorious. Talk to me about playing Optic and what it was like uh, for you guys in the mindset going into the game in Game 4. Yeah, I think I think we just took a lot of confidence um, going off that, off that team secret series where we took it for one and we realized that, you know, if we just come in with full confidence and we just have a bit of fun of vibing, then, uh, you know, anything's possible. So, I guess, I guess we really rocked out that series. We had to put strings against them. We knew where we could beat them and we knew that we felt that team. So, yeah, we started a little bit slow, um, but then really, really picked up steam. Once we got going, it was really, it felt like there was no stopping us. So, um, it was awesome to get that one for too. And yeah, it was pretty hard. I'm sure that everyone's seen uh, some of the reactions on social media and Twitter of us going off our heads. So, you know, I guess we were, we were considered one of the underdogs to make it out of wild card. So, to make it there is incredible. And yeah, I guess we are. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty crazy to see you guys take down Optic, and I, to be honest with you, when I saw you go crazy, I was like, yeah, that's how I think everybody felt. That ball hit the ground, and I was like, oh my god, they gotta be so happy right now. Um, but yeah, you, Fever, and Kami, you guys did tremendous work through the wild card. You get into the world championship. Uh, you're in the group stage now. You guys... Um, in game one, let's talk about the BDS round. I actually enjoyed the BDS round very much, even though uh, you guys uh, didn't take home the victory. I think it showed a lot of growth for you guys coming out of the wild card in that game, um, but it seemed like they had maybe the upper hand in a few games there, but you guys kept it close and held your own for a lot of it. Um, let's talk about the first game. So you're in uh, the group stage here. Uh, you guys have some wins under your belt from wild card. What's in your mindset going through uh, game one of group stage? Uh, yeah, I think we just we try to be in our confidence, I guess, coming straight into, into main event. Obviously, that BDS were a really strong team. Uh, we knew if we got some confidence, we could bring a good performance. And I think that, yeah, game one, it was, uh, we, we probably we didn't start incredibly, but the vibes of the game was there when I was the main thing. So we really brought that. And uh, yeah, I think that it was it was definitely one of the series. We had a few close ones, a few one by one, a few over time. You know, I think that if, if we had some overtime to go the other way, we would have really had that mental edge, I guess, and maybe took the series out, but unfortunately it didn't quite go our way. But I think we still took a lot of confidence knowing that, you know, if we put it all together, we could beat a team like that, and that really shows that we can beat anyone. Yeah, I agree 100% with you, and I do have to say, uh, now you guys, uh, you're going to run the bracket in, uh, in the loser bracket here, work your way back up, and end up taking this title, I guarantee it. Um, but you guys are playing Energy here, uh, I believe tomorrow, correct? You guys uh, have the game tomorrow uh, against Energy. What uh, what do you guys know so much about uh, so far about Energy, and what are you guys looking to do tomorrow? Uh, well, Energy, uh, for, you know, I think you know, the mental side of things, I feel like they're not, they're not quite in form right now, so I think we're... we're Playing them at the right time, they just came up before I lost the game one as well. So we're really feeling comfortable going into that. I think that uh, you know there's a bit of history, I guess, with NRG and OC, and I can't just beat them before the World Championships. And I think, yeah, I guess taking that, you know, it feels like there's, there's something sort of growing in that matchup. So we're really looking forward to it. I think it's a perfect matchup for us to to get the ball rolling. And also, it's going to be out on the main stage. Right now. 38,000 plus fans, so I think that's going to be super exciting. Yeah, I love it, brother. I love that attitude going into it, and uh, I, I I have full faith in uh, that you guys uh, will deliver a pounding on energy. But uh, I do have to uh, ask, how's Kami and uh, and uh, Fever um, preparing for these as well? Not just yourself, but obviously you're the veteran here. You got to kind of keep your team kind of uh, all right, boys. Here, this is where we need to be. This is what needs to happen. How's Fever and Kami doing going into the uh, the second game? Yeah, I think we just keep a warm up moment. I think, you know, we've been putting in the work. We had a good boot camp. And I think, yeah, all of the work that we've done, I guess, over the past year, really, the whole season has, has led us to this point. So it's only just fine tuning now and, and keeping warm for the event. So we'll be scrimming today in our day off and, and then just hanging out and keeping the vibes, go up for a team dinner tonight. And then, yeah, with a final game tomorrow. So we'll, we'll come in as warm as possible and, you know, get out there in front of those fans and try and put on the show. So, yeah, we really can't wait. CJ, CJ, thank you, brother, for being here. I do truly appreciate you. Uh, again, go, go knock some heads off, brother. You got this. Run through the loser's rack. Get up there and take the title home. Appreciate you. Do it for the Renegades. I got my sweater on, dude. We're representing here. Right. Be good, thank man. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, we will do, brother. Be good, and we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you, thank you guys. See you later, brother. Later, brother. And next week, we'll update you with how they finish in the World Championship as it concludes this weekend. And you can catch it out all on the Rocket League Esports YouTube channel or on twitch.tv slash Rocket League.
We have another segment to celebrate our 50th episode coming up right after the break. And welcome back, everyone, to the 1UP XP show. With it being our 50th episode and our one-year birthday, we are looking back at some of the highlights of the 1UP XP show after the first year. So I've come up with five things, not really in any particular order, but five things that really kind of hit home with the first year of the 1UP XP show. Let's get into it. Starting with number five, a lot of guests. We've had over 40 plus guests here on the 1UP XP show. I So many that I can't even put highlights of you all because it would take up an entire millions of hours of timeline and that would be too much for me to edit. But thank you to everyone who gave some time to be on the show, whether it was to inform us, entertain us on programs, on what you do in the worlds of video games or really anything that we've had you on the show for. From a kid again to Haggerty to every college and program, thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping make this show what it has been over the last year. Number four, campus visits. So we had the privilege of going out and visiting a lot of campuses across uh, Michigan, not just Northern Michigan, but Michigan. We started off with NMC in Traverse City, checked out their new program that is now over a year old. And then we also checked out Ferris State, who Ferris State's had a, an esports program for a little bit, but now they're tying more into it. They actually have degrees for esports and they're building a three-story building centered around esports. And that will be coming next year for the building, but the degree comes this fall. So if you're interested in that, check that out. And then we also stopped into Siena Heights down in Chelsea, Michigan. Now, uh, or near Chelsea, I should say it's actually in Adrian, Michigan. So we stopped and checked out Coach's Rob's, Coach Rob's Digs. And let me tell you, it was something spectacular. Thank you to Coach Rob. Thank you to Siena Heights. Gorgeous campus. And they have a sweet lab that they are now expanding. And the number one visit that we had was down to Oakland University and actually the Renegades, who we just had on the show talk to CJ. CJ, well, Oakland plays out of the Renegades building where they have a sweet setup. It's basically... Imagine a Buffalo Wild Wings, but converted to be awesome for playing video games and some entertainment. Super awesome vi time visiting all these campuses, and I can't thank all those directors enough. And we will do more campus visits down the road, but that was our first taste of seeing some of these esports labs and programs up close, and it was super awesome. So thank you for all of that. Number three, Comic-Con. Yeah, I didn't think Comic-Con would necessarily be associated with this show, but there was a home for us. So we went to the Cherry Capital Comic-Con this year, and it was the, it was over Memorial Day weekend. And man, it was so much fun. We met people, fans of the stream, we met fans of the show, and we got a booth there right up front, and we had a lot of people stop by, talk to us. The Cherryland Ghostbusters were there, who actually won um, something that's on top of our list, and we'll get to in a little bit. So we talked to them. Hung out with a, a lot of viewers and really got to talk about video games, the 1UP XP show, and what we're trying to achieve with this show. And it was a lot of fun and look forward to doing it again next year. So thank you to the Cherryland uh, Ghostbusters, but also thank you to the Cherry Capital Comic Con for having us. It was a blast and can't wait for next year. Number two, Michigan Association of Broadcasters Award. Now, this is something super special to me because I've been in the TV business for 14 years. A lot of it has been as a weatherman but I never won an award for anything weather-wise. Never, never sniffed an award for anything weather-wise. But this year that changed with the 1UP XP show. We got an award for episode seven, which was, um, I believe, Surgeon, Surgeon Simulator 2. Um, and the award was for special interest programming, uh, which is super cool. So here's the award and uh, it was, I, I still am baffled by this to this day. You know, I spent 14 years in weather, but I uh, spend six months in video games and I get an award. So uh, we must be doing something right. So thank you um, for the Michigan Association of Broadcasters for uh, realizing we're trying to do something and I guess we're doing something right. I've got an award for it. This thing is, this is, this is pretty awesome. Uh, number one, now this was kind of tough to i mean it's not tough to choose the number one but i have to say having the one up xp show and the kid again uh work together and raise six thousand dollars for families that have children dealing with life-threatening conditions 
Now, that money goes to those families to send them on adventures throughout the year. And we, I believe, if the math is correct, we were able to get 300 families into Michigan's adventure scot-free. Our community, our viewers, our support raised $6,000 for a kid again through the month of March. And then we topped it all off with a 24 hour stream in April. That was extremely heartwarming um, and amazing to be a part of. The viewers came out and the support was there. I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I do a fundraiser every year and usually it's around $250, $500 that we raise for um, St. Jude. But this year I wanted to do it for a kid again and uh, in particular the Michigan chapter. And we raised $6,000, over $6,000. And we were able to send some of those families uh, on a trip to forget about what they're dealing with. Forget the hospitals, forget that they have a life-threatening condition, and be a kid again. So that was something super special to me, and I really am glad that the 1UP XP show was a part of that. We have one more segment left here on the 1UP XP show, celebrating our 50th episode and our one-year anniversary. We'll be right back after this break. And that's it. Episode 50, one-year anniversary in the books. Thank you so much for being here and celebrating with me today. Be good, stay safe, take care. I'll see you guys next week.